Hey, welcome back. It's another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellin from Mr. Excel. I'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is episode 89, Pivot Total Column First. All right, so hey, I want to set up this problem. I was uh, doing a seminar up in Michigan uh, this week and someone came to me with an interesting situation. He said, I have a pivot table that is really, really, really wide. And um, as I change the slicers, uh, the size of the pivot table changes. But he said, the thing that drives me crazy is I can't see the grand total column. All right, so let's just, here, I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to split the window here. Uh, and we'll take a look for A, the columns go all the way out to, actually, for A, the columns go all the way out to IH, for B, they go to DT, for C, they go to uh, FP. So there's a different number of columns every time. He says, the thing that drives me crazy is I really want to be able to see the grand total column first. I want to see it over there uh, between the product and the first center. I want to bring it to the front so that way I can always see the grand total. And you know, my initial reaction, my initial reaction was, okay, I wonder if we can actually fool Excel into doing this. Uh, and so I said, let's go back to your data. I'm actually going to make a copy of this data and I'm going to add a column uh, called extra, extra, all right? and in that extra column, I'm just going to put the same value uh, all the way. I'll just put an A everywhere. It really doesn't matter what it is. Oh, I want to fill. Okay, and then create a pivot table. Insert pivot table. Okay, we would put extra and center going down the left hand side with sales, and you see that because of the compact view that view that I hate all the time, showing compact form, the subtotals uh, end up at the top of the group. And so we have this, let's call it a fake grand total uh, that appears at the top of the list. I said, you know, that's one way to get the total to the top. However, that fails when we drag things to go across the column labels. No matter what we do, that uh, is always going to show up as uh, the last column instead of the first column. So I said, all right, no way that we're ever going to get this inside of the pivot table, uh, what we're going to have to do is try and create a clever formula out here on the left-hand side that is going to go grab the grand total. So, when it comes to clever formulas, uh, that would be uh, Mike. So, Mike, let's see what you can do. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Hey, when it comes to clever formulas, it's the Mr. Excel message board. That's where you go. And in fact, the trick I'm going to use, I learned years ago at the Mr. Excel message board. I think it was actually in the Hall of Fame there. All right, so our pivot table, we need a formula to get the last number. So the problem is, of course, as Mr. Excel said, it could be here, or it could be here, or it could be there. Well, we can, um, there's a lookup formula that will find the last number. So let's go ahead and see how that works. Now I'm going to insert a column, Alt-I-C, and maybe type uh, grand totals here. All right, um, I'm going to use lookup. Now, lookup can only do approximate match. VLOOKUP and MATCH are lookup functions which can do exact or approximate. And the cool thing about approximate and the, uh, for any of these functions, if you give a lookup value that's bigger than anything in the table, the lookup vector or the VLOOKUP table, if you give it a value bigger than anything in the table, it'll get the last one. So lookup value, I'm going to give it the biggest number Excel knows, 9.5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 nines, and then an E plus 307. Now that's the biggest number that Excel knows, and you could put any big number as long as it's bigger than anything here, but um, if you put that number in, it won't go wrong. All right, the lookup vector, that's like the lookup table. I don't know where the end is going to be, so I'm just going to put 7 colon 7. Whoops. There's an ampersand, so seven. That means the whole uh, seventh row. And sure enough, when we copy it down, uh, that'll work. Now, there'll be a little problem here if we change this, right? Oh, that's looking bad there. And it goes down too far. And if we were to do A, then it wouldn't go down far enough. So I'm going to do a little amendment here. I'm going to say, hey, that if. And C7 is the cell I want to look in. If I click in the table, it might give me that big get pivot table data. So I'm just going to type C7. Anytime that's equal to nothing or blank, so double quote, double quote, we'll say when it's equal to blank, then that's the logical test. 
If it's blank, that means it's down past the grand total. Then what do I want? I want to put double quote. I want to show nothing for value of true. Otherwise, run the formula. All right, so now I can copy this down. Make sure it's further than any last possible number. And then we have our formula. One last thing would be nice. Actually, let's do some, uh, some sort of number format. It would be nice if we had an indication uh, that this was the grand total. So I'm going to use conditional formatting. Uh, with the range selected and the active cell at the top, I'm going to do Alt-O-D, New Rule, Formula. Now the formula is, hey, I want to look over, starting here, one, so it's uh, C7. I want to say if C7, that's a relative cell reference, equals grand total. Now, right now, it's a relative cell reference, and it's as if it's in the active cell. When, you when it gets copied down in memory, it'll always lo be looking one, two cells to my left. So I'm going to say Format. Now, I would like to put a border, but I don't see any borders there. I'm going to go over to Font. I'm going to use Bold, and I still want a double underline for accounting. So under Underline, I'm going to say, hey, give me a double underline. Anytime it finds a grand total two over, it will format that. Now, this is something that occurs in conditional formatting, sometimes uh, data validation dialog box with formula, sometimes the name dialog box. I'm going to Alt-O-D. And sure enough, it looks like you can see here it's got some double quotes. So I double click it to edit it. And it just does this sometimes. It puts in quotes where it's not supposed to. So I'm going to try and fix this. All right, I got my fingers crossed this time. I got rid of all the extra double quotes. Click OK. Click OK. So there it is. So now if I click B or A, there's my grand totals. All right, throw back to Mr. Excel. Hey, that is annoying the way that the uh, conditional formatting puts those double quotes in sometime. But something else you said, Mike, about get pivot data, I, I started to think, uh, I wonder if get pivot data could solve this problem. Uh, so I go to pivot table tools, the options tab, uh, open up this little options drop down, turn back on, generate get pivot data. Everyone turns that off usually. Uh, and so if I just equal sign and now use uh, control right arrow to get to that grand total uh, and we take a look at that formula that says equal get pivot data. Uh, so we're looking for the sales field for the table B5, the product and see they hard coded to Alabama. That's really bad. We need it to not be hard coded to Alabama. We want to pick up whatever value is in this case B7, B7 and then kind of do the same sort of thing that you did equal if is blank. B7, then give me nothing. Otherwise, give me the get pivot data and copy that down far enough. So it covers everything. But this is annoying. The, the uh, get pivot data formula doesn't work in the grand total. It, it is possible to generate get pivot data for the grand total, but it, it just uh, it has no arguments at all. So then oh, this is this is just getting worse. And worse as I go, I continue to hate get pivot data. We kind of have to say here, if B7 is equal to grand total, then use this alternate form of get pivot data. Otherwise, use the one that works everywhere else and copy that down. Far enough. OK, then it works for whichever version. So I'm not sure that that's any better than the great old lookup. It was a few weeks ago, Mike, I thought you were actually going to break out that old lookup. So I'm glad to see that it came in. All right. Well, hey, I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next week for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is fun.